Hello, this is Pastor Jay with Walk Truth Radio Podcast and Senior Pastor of Walk and True Christian Fellowship Church. I always get a question. How do I find you other than Facebook? Well, all you have to do from your smartphone or computer is Google Walk in Truth Radio, Dr. James Sutton. And there will be many platforms to listen to the broadcast from. You pick the one that you enjoy. We are on every podcast platform. If you go to your favorite podcast platform and just search Walk in Truth Radio, you'll see the footprint and that's us. You can subscribe there or simply Google us and listen to the latest broadcast of Walk in Truth Radio where we teach the Bible line by line and verse by verse. So again, Google Walk in Truth Radio with Dr. James Sutton and look for the icon of the footprint in the sand. Peace. Hello, this is Pastor Jay with Walk in Truth Radio Podcast and Senior Pastor of Walk in Truth Christian Fellowship Church. I want to invite all those in the St. Louis metropolitan area Come worship with us every Sunday at 8 a.m. at the Universal Church of Jesus Christ building located at 2301 Wallace Avenue. That's W-A-L-L-I-S Avenue 63114 in Overland, Missouri. Our Dig Deeper Bible Studies are held 11 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Tuesdays. Our Rescue Addiction Recovery class is being held at 7 p.m. on Mondays. We want you to come enjoy the love of God, worship with us, and go line by line and verse by verse as we travel through the Bible. We look forward to seeing you, and one of the things you can leave at home is your wallet. We want you to come sit back, enjoy the fellowship, the love, and the great teaching that goes on at Walk in Truth. This is Pastor Jay. I always want you to be encouraged to be blessed, and thank you for considering us as your place of worship. My name is X, I'm 29 years old, and I've been incarcerated for 11 years and 9 months. He describes being brought up in the projects in Chicago, and he says, uh, ironically, and, and with, a, with a touch of humor, he says, in 1993, we got evicted from the projects for not paying rent. Can you believe that, being evicted from the projects? The lowest income living for not paying rent. After that, it seemed like every time the wind blew, we had a different address and a different school and different friends. I can't read the whole letter. It would take too long. He says, in February 1999, at the age of 18, I was incarcerated. In 2000, I was convicted and sent to prison. When in prison, I continued to join members of the gang. We used the chapel to meet other gang members where we transferred information and passed weed to one another, etc. But in 2005, the Lord placed some brothers in my life. I'm quoting exactly what he says in his his verbs here. In 2005, the Lord placed some brothers in my life who was incarcerated too, who were what we had considered real hood rich gangsters. He had renewed them brother's heart and poured out his spirit in them. They would have me for hours planting the gospel in me. They watered it as well. I resisted it initially, but then I found myself going back to them, wanting to hang with them. They had a joy and light that I knew was there, but just couldn't quite comprehend it. You get this? They had a joy and a light that intellectually I knew was there, but I couldn't quite comprehend it. I was drawn to them. They wasn't preaching quotes, plant a seed today, get rich tomorrow, semicolon. They wasn't giving me a motivation speech, comma. They were preaching Jesus Christ. The power of God's plan of salvation, the word of God, how he hates sin, etc. I can't continue to read. He then goes on to say, I suddenly realized for the first time that the things that I did were ugly, tasteless, and merely sin. Full stop, short sentence, yep, comma, sin, three exclamation marks. Yep, sin. Now, he's one of six kids brought up in the projects. You don't hear him explaining 
his life away. The reason I'm here is because I'm a horrible victim of this, that, and the next thing. No, he says, I, am, I now suddenly realize that the reason I did what I did is because I am a rotten sinner. At that moment, my blind eyes were opening, and I began to see, and the struggle began. My eyes were opening. I began to see. The struggle began. What do I do? Funny. It wasn't me. He's saying, what do I do? He's now gone present tense. So what do I do in this circumstance? What do I do? Funny. It wasn't me, comma. Talk about predestination, comma, and election, semicolon. The Holy Spirit compelled me, gave me the courage to step forward and denounce the gang. Yet didn't leave his house empty. Be began to fill it up with the word, fellowship, worship, etc. A.W. Tozer said it best, quotes, where man has presently responded to the call of God, God had previously worked in him. Thereby I still can't boast in the role I played. It was all God from before the foundation of the world. This is better theology than you get from most people who have been apart, say, for 27 years, for goodness sake. This guy gets it. This isn't somebody who says, I, I, you know, I banged my head in the jail and turned over a new leaf and decided to be a better person. No. He says, frankly, I have no interest in this stuff. But these guys, they shone. This walk in the narrow path with the Lord Jesus Christ, who did to me what he did to the blind man in John 9, notes this, has been full of pain, heartaches, heartbreaks, unwanted loss, trials and tribulations and earlier in the letter he describes how in july 2006 his baby sister felicia died from septicemia and i felt a pain i had never felt before that is after he'd come to christ not before he came to christ hello this is pastor jay walker to the radio podcast with your real talk weekend you just listened to Alistair Begg, a usurp from a sermon that he did. And as you can see, it must have interested me that I would uh, just take that out. And simply salvation. You talk about salvation and getting it. Not being able to intellectualize the beauty and the majesty of salvation. It's there. It's 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 a part of what he said. This man who has been incarcerated understood that his sin is inherent in his nature and that he has to take responsibility for his sin when it's having a relationship with the Holy God. And that the only way is through repentance, a change of mind about who he is and his sin and a mind and a heart contrite and spirit set on receiving the free gift of salvation through which repentance and faith are needed. So many of us think it's about coming forward saying a sinner's prayer and really it's greater than that it's about a heart and a sovereign God who decides in his sovereign prerogative of, of love to come and invade a sin sick sinner's heart and opens his eyes to the truth and therefore by the power of the Holy Spirit converts a man's heart or a woman's heart into a heart of his flesh and he bends with, with his renewed mind repents and believes upon what God has given us in Calvary and we begin to see how sinful our sin is and how glorious the gift of grace and mercy has always been and what we do is ask the age old question 
what must I do to be saved? And Peter said, repent, every one of you, and believe. And then you're saved. Romans 10 and 9 tells us to confess with our mouth and believe in our hearts that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. But before we get to 10 and 9, we have to believe chapters 1 through 9. That all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That there is none righteous, no, not one. There are none that understands that man in his born in sin and shaped in iniquity would rather worship the creator creation more than the creator worship the things that are made versus the creator who made them that men prefer darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil this is the state of man's heart deceitful desperately wicked Out of the heart, the mouth speaks lies, slanders. This is the condition of the fallen man, the condition to which we're born in. But there's a remedy. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who became the propitiation for our sin. That once you are saved, you are sealed. And no one can take you out of Jesus' hand. Is the sinner who is the inheritance of Jesus because he died for them. All of us. No matter what race, no matter what uh, political background, no matter what economic circumstance that you may be in, all of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You can't intellectualize the grace and the mercy of God because it's beyond belief that a holy God, a thrice holy God would condescend himself to save not only a wretch like me, but a rebellious shake my fist at him, don't follow his commandments or his statutes person. His creation. And yet he loved us enough to take on sinful flesh, to walk amongst us, trying to show us the way. And he said that no one can come to the Father except through him. And yet there are those that won't come. He even cried out to Jerusalem. And said, I would have gathered you like a mother hen, but you will not come. He he also said, for all those who thirst, believe upon me as the scripture has said, and out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. He said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the light. I am all that you need. And yet, we still won't come. It's just that simple. Will you come? I'm not talking about a denomination. I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about the relationship of a king and his subjects. That he loves us enough to call us brothers and sisters. This day is the day of salvation. You must decide whether... You're going to be saved or not because this world is evil. The Bible tells us the world is going to wax worse. Men are going to wax worse and worse. And the only answer is Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Will you come? You've tried everything else. Why not try Jesus? You burn candles, incense, spread all over your body and you still are empty because those are the things that are made and are not Jesus. It's the blood that covers a 
multitude of your sins. Our life, those of us who are saved, is hidden in Christ Jesus. And he tells us that nothing can pluck us from his hand. Death, nor life, nor angel, nor principality, nothing can separate you from the everlasting holding strength of God's love. He is the justifier. Whatever righteousness you see in a saint of God, it's imputed by Jesus Christ and his blood. So this Real Talk weekend, I want you to understand what Alistair Begg was saying in the letter that was written to him. It is just that simple. Jesus saves. And we walk by faith and not by sight. And you cannot intellectualize or purchase salvation through the works of the flesh, but through the grace, faith, repentance to and towards Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to which every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he Yeshua Mashiach Jesus is Lord and Savior this is Pastor Jay with Walker Truth Radio Podcast I always want you to be encouraged and be blessed and be at peace and always remember walk in truth peace